project for the day. We're gonna make Atlas machines affordable again. Milling machine drawbar. And once again, I'd like to thank our wonderful eBay sellers for inspiring this video. If you look, there is a, more depending on when you watch this video, there was a Atlas milling machine drawbar listed. This is a shop built Atlas milling machine drawbar. And I'll go over a little bit closer. Anyway, um, Atlas milling machine drawbar listed on Flea Bay and the going rate is a hundred bucks for it. And I don't know if they're shipping or not. I didn't look that close. I guess I could. Um, oh no, free shipping. We're gonna give you a free shipping for that. So anyway, if you want a original Atlas drawbar, and, and this one is listed, this is a Atlas Horiz horizontal milling machine drawbar, good used condition. Now, if you want a good original, maybe not good, but if you want an original Atlas milling machine drawbar, this is not it. The one that is listed is not original or if it is original, and it's a good functional drawbar, I'm not saying it's not, but it is not an original drawbar in my estimation. Um, if it is an original, it was not built to Atlas's prints that are now circulating around, which are the original Atlas print, which is this print right here, which is an M1576. And there's our print. Now, the thing that immediately tells me that it is not original is the threads on the end. It's threaded for an inch, and then it's a straight shank turned to 372 to 374 is the dimensions given by Atlas. The one that's listed on there is threaded full length. And you can't really tell 100%, but that indicates to me that was a piece of ready rod of some sort that was threaded full length. It was drilled and tapped, drilled and silver soldered in, whatever the case may be into that shank. So. If you're wanting to build one in your own shop, that's a perfectly acceptable way of doing it, and you'll have a good drawbar. Um, in that case, all you need is six inches of three-quarter inch round stock to make this section and the little centering shoulder that you need, and um, then a foot of ready rod. I think that's sold by the foot. You need, they show six and 13 sixteenths is what the length of this turned down portion is, so you're gonna need um, seven and a half or eight inches of it, so you're gonna buy a foot if you're buying it from your from your um, local home shop. So anyway, this is one that I built for my mill and this was built back in eight of 04 and it's marked Atlas Mill. Now, when I built this one, this was, this was probably a piece of pre-hard 4140, something that was probably a pre-hard. Um, I don't know that it necessarily needs to be pre-hard. You know, as long as you are halfway careful with it and don't reef down on it, which you don't need to do, why um, the standard mild steel or, or low strength ready rod that you can get is uh, gonna be perfectly acceptable. You can order it from McMaster. You know, you can order a length of from them, and this is 3816 is what is threaded, and you can either buy it full length, you can buy it full length threaded. You know, potentially if you could find a about a seven or an eight inch three eighths bolt that was threaded on the end, why you could cut the head off of it, and that would work perfectly well too. So, anyway, today I'm going to turn one out of a piece of stainless, which this will probably be 303 stainless, 303 through. I, I would imagine it's 303. I didn't even look on the on the end to see what it was before I cut off two pieces. I cut off one piece 11 inches long and one piece one inch long for my little centering piece, and it calls for 10 and 7 eighths inch for the for the long piece of the body. And this drawing doesn't show this centering piece, but it's an inch long, basically. This one was evidently, I shortened a little bit too much. I've just got a washer stuck on there as a spacer and it works just fine. So um, I'm gonna set the camera up, we'll let it run. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off and center drill one end so I can run it in the center on the tail stock. I'm gonna leave this end in the, probably just the three jaw chuck. There's no sense it doesn't have to, there's no great precision there, you know. I mean, you're using it to thread into the into the headstock of your milling machine, and I'm going to set it up. We'll turn this section down. Probably we'll leave it oversized because we're going to want to start flexing once we get a little bit 
of length out there, especially on a, on a light duty lathe if you're running it on an Atlas lathe. And I'm going to turn it down a ways, we'll thread this inch, and then we'll go back and do our final turn for the rest of it. Then we'll uh, pull it out of there, make sure we've got our length right from here to here type of thing. And I'm just going to probably use my spin indexer. I'll set this up in the spin index on the milling table and cut it down so we've got a 3 8 inch shank on the end. That's all there is to it. I expect to oh, spend about an hour on this this morning. So uh, there again, making them affordable. Either you can spend 10 or 12 bucks on materials and an hour, or even two hours in your shop, learning something, practicing your skills, or uh, you can spend $100 for a non-original, your choice. So anyway, I'm gonna take this over. We'll get it set up in the lathe and we're just gonna run through it. Let it run full speed. I'm not gonna give you any commentary. It's pretty standard turning operations.
Okay, well this was just a quick and dirty little project, but here we are. That's what we end up with. We've got our adapter piece here, which I haven't seen a drawing for this, but every one I've seen is one inch long. You know, I would wait and fit this to your machine if you're building this, otherwise I, I think one inch long is a standard. But there's the rest of it. I was using a fairly dull cutter on this end just because it was a three-quarter inch cutter I could run it in one pass. But there we go. So a quick and easy, easy project. You know, there's this is to print. You know, this is the way Atlas originally produced them. Um, you have the option of making them like the one that's on the auction site right now, just getting a piece of threaded rod, drilling and tapping, silver soldering it in, loctiting it in if you thread it, whatever the case may be. Um, you're either going to have to silver solder it if you're not going to thread it or else you're going to have to thread it on, on in there and then I'd loctite it probably. Um, but that's the way they are. The other option would be to take smaller diameter rod, thread it on both ends, affix it into this the same way. I'm actually going to produce a batch of them that way. I'm going to load them onto the website. Actually, it'll be on the website by the time you see this video. And uh, it's going to be on a pre-order thing. I think I'm going to leave these, you know, on a pre-order with a, I think, a fairly good price until um, this is mid-July, probably until the beginning of August, uh, with the expected delivery probably shipping by the second week in August because all beginning of August I'll order whatever materials are appropriate to to fill the, any orders that I've got and then um, have a little bit of stock on hand and and um, then we'll ship them out that way they will be a blued and probably a pre-hard material is probably what I'm going to use it's up in the air but I'm gonna have a, a good product when we're done um, and then it will be blued you know, the way I normally blue things, whereas this one's stainless. And um, that's the way I'm going to produce them. And, um, you know, if anybody's interested, jump on that pre-order. I'd appreciate it. That's what is supporting this channel or helping to support this channel and allows me to continue to make these videos is the, the little gizzies that I'm building and, and selling to you guys. So anyway, that's the way I produce one. If you want to produce one in your own shop, you know, when we, uh, and I've already fitted this to, to uh, my machine, but when we compare them side by side to the one that I've been using for the last 18 years or whatever it is, 17, 18 years, why uh, we're well within spec. This angle's kind of in the wind as long as it centers up. All it, all it has to do is center up relatively well in the back of the uh, spindle on the milling machine. And uh, there we go. This dimension's a little bit in the wind too. It's got to be long enough to where you can get your get your wrench on the end of it without interfering with the headstock cover. Yeah, you don't want it sticking way out there in the wind. And um, inch long threads here, three quarter inch for your shaft here. I think they call it three and three and five sixteenths is is that length. Three quarter inch diameter. You know, this is going to be three eighths diameter. So anyway, there we go. Quick and easy. Make Atlas machines affordable again. Build these in your own shop or, you know, whatever other options you choose to follow. And uh, comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.